I'm so tap tap and let's play Refunct. Is this? Oh, it does have controller support. Okay, cool. Our review copy of this game was provided by the developer. Oh. A little weirdness with the, sh with the water shader there. If you look at the direction I'm moving. Just a minor thing. Um, so this is described as Refunct is a peaceful, short, first-person platformer about restoring a vibrant world. How do I jump? Why is that? Why is that left button or right button? But either way, that's a little weird. Oh, I have like a slide. Okay, button. Oh, okay. It. I'll, I'll tell you a secret. If you want to pitch me a game, tell me that it is short and worth it. I, you know, a, an awesome one hour or like two hour or you know minimum or like maximum of like five hours. You know, as long as it feels worth it. Uh, worth, you know, whatever the cost. You know, that's that's my jam. I I want to play a wide variety of games, and, you know, I want to... Okay, I think this has wall jumps. Yes, it does. Okay, how do I... Wait, do I just have a double jump? No. Um... Oh, you can do a climb. Okay, cool. <laughs> I like the visual look here. As opposed to, you know, the auditory look. Uh, what do I do now? Oh, I see. Oh, the, the button shines up. Okay, I see how we work here. Hold on, let me see our options here. Full screen, decent quality. Lots of effects. Uh, more interesting the game options. I love games with lots of options, by the way. I just, somebody, I posted on Twitter, um, this thing, um, Legend of Dark Witch 2 has a great, really in-depth options menu. And it gives you a lot of options that a lot of platformers never really bother to give you. Um, some people say that um, you should never have, like, too many options, because, like, you know, you don't want, um, you know, because, you know, oh, people get confused or whatever. And it's like, the reality is people that would get confused with too many options, they're probably just never going to open the options menu to begin with. So if you can hear that hiss, I'll probably, I'll try and edit that out. The, uh, it's only, you can only hear it when the, uh, audio is totally silent, but, uh, I did some stuff with the sound of my computer and it's not quite right yet. I don't, I don't know. I think I have too much, um, hmm, do I need to get over, up? Oh, not quite high enough. Um, I don't know. I guess I must have too much noisy equipment. What was that? Hello? We got, a, we got an achievement for it, apparently. What are you? Mario Pipes? Whee! Okay. Whee! But, uh... Yeah. R don't, don't let anyone tell you that recording is easy. <laughs> there's, there's so much stupid crap that can go wrong. What's this? Oh, Mr. Mr. Blue or Yellow Panel? You know, colors. What are colors, even? Um... Hello. Oh, here we go. Oh! Getting dangerous, huh? Press them buttons. Ooh! Oh, dead. Oh. Oh, we can swim. Okay. I wasn't sure. Oh, you can go underwater. What is this? I... I did not expect to be able to do this. Is this just... I don't think we can do much under here, but that's really cool, though. Okay, back on land. I need to get that thinger. Give me the thinger. Give! What are those? What are these? Why are there so many? It's a teeny bit loud. Probably turn that down a bit. Oh wait, first let me get this. I don't know what I'm doing other than pressing these buttons and making things green again. But I do like the visual style of this game. It's a little weird. I'm hoping we find some like different colored like stuff, but uh the general concept's pretty great. There we go. I guess I can lift off these features here. Platforming, wall jumps, slides, pipes, lifts, springboards. Hello. These things remind me of, like, the portal, um, those cubes I'm collecting. They remind me of the portal 
like personality core things. I'll give. How do I get that? I want that. Give. Ah. Uh -uh. Okay. Hmm. How do I get that? Yeah, I see you, Mr. Red Light. Um. Beautiful emotional soundtrack and vivid er, vibrant visuals. Wee! What? Don't just dump me underwater. How rude. Playful, learn to play without tutorials. Relaxing, play at your own place without pressure. Dynamic, changing world and music sync. Day night cycle. Ooh, there's day night cycle. That's cool. Um, how do I get? How do I get you? I want to get the things. Oh, maybe if I rise up other things, these things will be more gettable, I suppose. Oh, I'm supposed to- Oh, it's teaching that you need to go underwater to get into some of the pipes. What did that raise up? This, I guess. Okay, I guess you don't totally need to, like, grab absolutely every gray piece, but... This is like the most important thing, is the buttons. <laughs> I like when games sort of trap you, and then, you know, you have to learn a new skill to get out. So obviously this is, you know, your uh, wall jump tutorial. Also, I really like when wall jumps are paired with, like, an auto-climb mechanic. Kind of makes them a lot more, uh, approachable. What are you? What are the things? Oh, it's nighttime! What's the nighttime music? Oh, hello. How do I get to you? Oh, here we go. I like that- I really like that you can wall jump, like, with your butt. Like, if you're facing- If you're facing a wall to your rear, you can still- Ah, oh, dang it. You can still do the jump. Right, I think I can just barely get to this thing? Give. Okay. Doesn't really run. Oh no! 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 You just need to touch a wall. You don't need to be facing it. So the movement's just very relaxed and like, oop! Oh yes! I knew it. Still don't know how to get to that one, but it's probably probably raise up some stuff later. That lets me get to it. What is it? Oh, that's a button. Hmm. This is our corner jump tutorial, I see. Really like how nice and chill this is. Um, I guess let's... There we go. Oh wait, there's two now. Just sort of go around relaxing and exploring. Those are two of my favorite things. Now we're getting more of these tall spires. I think if I climb up that one... How do I get to... I obviously got on that one before. Oh, 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 I see these. This. Give. Whee! Oh, yes! I'm assuming there's something that I do with all of... Once I get all of those or something. How do I get on top of you? Hmm. I like these ones where they're, like, hidden under other stuff. How do I get to you? Go under? I sure do! That's neat. Alright. I like the sort of quiet progression where things get a little bit more complicated, but it's it's all pretty handleable and nothing's too weird. I think we already went through that. So how do I Hmm? No. No. What's through the tube? Yeah, the wall jump thing basically lets you face whatever wall that you want to climb instead of what you need to jump off of. Can I get up here this way? I sure can. I'm not sure. To How did I get up to that? Did I just... Oh, here we go. Simple enough. That actually might have given me enough lift, but no, that's fine. Do I... Oh, 46. I guess there's a completion meter. Alright, I, I guess. 
I still go for 100% then. Doesn't seem like it'll take too long. I wonder if that 100% is based on like the buttons or if I absolutely need to cover absolutely every bit of grayness. I'll try not to leave anything obvious, so just in case. Whee! All right. Uh, oh, price of this game is three dollars. By the way, it's on Steam. We've got the press kit open here in another window. I keep forgetting to like explain things about the game. I, I tend to just jump into the game and play it because I mean, uh, you know, press info and stuff is nice, but uh, generally speaking, what I need to know is in the game. I mean, price is pretty relevant, but, uh... I tend to let price, like, sway me too much, but, uh... There's definitely some games that are a bit... overpriced. In the case, they underpriced, but I mean, most people aren't going to complain too much about that. Oh, hey! When did you get here? Do what you love to do? Do you do what you love to do? Oh. I don't know, it's a deep question, Mr. Mysterious Cube. I, I'm not sure if I appreciate you asking that. Uh, I can get up here. I was iffy on the jump being the left button, but this actually works perfectly fine, because I... Uh, well... I guess it's like, um... What's that game's name? Cloud Built. Uh, it lets you keep your thumbs on the control sticks at all times, so... Uh, there's no, there's no face button, so that, that makes perfect sense. I just usually don't expect Jump to be there, but it has a perfectly good reason. So yeah, I'm fine with it. Give. Huh? Button? And yeah, I was talking about, I really like short games, and it's sort of... I think players get a bad- like, short games get a bad rap, but as, as long as the price is right, I think... Oh! It's a spring! Okay, we're Sonic now. Oh, hello. Um... As long as short games, you know, priced reasonably, like... You know, a really great hour or so, you know, easily worth five bucks to me. Um... You know, some people have less disposable income and maybe they, you know want like a billion hours for like nine cents, but uh, generally thinking as long as you're reasonable. Oh, do we gotta press multiple buttons now? What is that? Oh, that's just the sun moving. I thought there was like a big thing moving, but I guess it's... What is that? Oh, it's the moon. Hello, Mr. Moon. Did you know that moonlight is the exact same as sunlight? It's just reflected, so... If vampires are really, you know, explode in sunlight, they should explode in moonlight too, but, uh... Just a little random fact there. I guess as long as it's, you know... It's reasonable if you explain it like... Well, vampires and reasonable don't tend to belong in the same sentence, but, uh... It makes sense as long as you're like, okay, it's less, you know, they're sensitive to sunlight, but it's not like... Any amount of sun will kill them, but like... The thing where, like, vampires get extra power in the moonlight? That's a little bit silly, but... I think it was, was it Blade that, like, it's ultraviolet. It's not the sun, it's the ultraviolet rays. You know, that's sort of trying to make, take science into account, which I kind of appreciate when stuff kind of does that, that. Um... I guess most people won't be interested in va their vampires for the sciencey bits, but, uh... I like when games kind of try to reconcile you know, myth and reality a little bit. But the most important thing is always internal consistency, you know? Even if you have magic, you can't really just be like, ah, screw you, it's magic, it always works. It's like, you know, but if, like, Harry Potter gets stuck in, you know, whatever place, and then he just happens to have a spell that lets him, like, teleport anywhere, I don't know if that's, like, reasonable in Harry Potter or not, but, like, then you, you gotta wonder, why didn't he use that before in, like, you know, other situation where he got trapped, but he didn't do that. It's like, it's all about consistency, it's not necessarily about, you know, 100% physically possible, but you, you gotta create an internally consistent world. Anyway, this has nothing to do with this game, but... Um... I'm a little confused. Looks like these button noises are a little loud, I'll move my controller a bit here. 
I was forgetting. My controller is a bit too close to the mi er, microphone. It gets a little noisy. I do I guess here. I'm getting a little bit more difficult, so... What's my approach here? I think if I... Can I go up that? Or maybe this is better. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Crisis of... Never mind. Crisis not averted. Crisis intact. Um... Might as well climb these while I'm here. Bad idea, actually. Never mind. Ah, oh, man. How do we get back up there? Is it this? Alright. Alright, very careful. Be very, very quiet. Hunting wabbits, damn it. Alright. We, we got this. It's fine. I got this. No reason to be concerned. No cause for alarm. Um, this one. And this one. And this one. The biggest thing about first person platforming is not knowing when you're at the edge of a thing. It's like, so the more precise jumps are a little, that's why I think I've pretty much never seen a first person game do this, but something I really like in platformers where precision is kind of important is they let you jump a few seconds after you leap off of a thing. Um, Mercenary Kings does this absolutely beautifully. So when you walk off an edge, um, you can jump like for about two frames after your character leaves the platform and the character sprite will dip one pixel. And as long as you press jump right when your character is dipping that one pixel, you will always jump. And it's just, it's perfect because you, you, it's 100%, um, there we go. Yeah, it's 100% predictable. It's it's a great visual feedback. It has just a wide enough window to uh, be consistent. Uh, it just feels really good. Uh, where are we going? This one's yellow. Have we upgraded to the yellow zone? How do we get up to the yellow zone? I still got some things to get. Wait, we're 94%. Is that? I guess that's the game end button. But I want to get those other things. Should I get those before or after I press the yellow button? I'm a little scared here. If I go through this guy, yep. Okay. Okay, we're close enough to the yellow button. I'm I'm gonna press it. I'm not sure if we're gonna get the bad ending or something, but we're gonna press it. We're gonna press it. Oh, yeah. oh it was a heart. Aw. What makes you smile? I don't know, game. Thank you. Wee splat. Alright, 96%. So we still have those items to get. I'm gonna go get those. Um... Alright, there's one. Alright. Alright. I mean, I guess this is the key. Yep. Probably... Maybe not. Hmm. Wait, if I jump off this at just the right time, will it launch me up? It sure will. Okay. So there's three more to get, or possibly two, depends on how they count up. I definitely see that one, so let's, let's head over that way. Oh, that's not quite what I wanted to do. Whee! All right. I'm gonna take one last look underwater too. See if there's any. See if there's stuff still underwater. 98%. But what? Oh, I see some gray bits over there. But I don't see a thinger. Still don't know what to call these. But I want. I want. I want all the cubes. I have no idea if these count towards percent too. I guess I'll. They're in the. They're on the way. So, may as well touch all of these. And we'll see if our percent goes up. Ninety-nine percent. Okay, yeah, they, they, those do count towards percent. So I might have all of those orbs. Is there still stuff underwater? There's not. Oh, that's really neat. Oh, so everything underwater was actually we we rose up everything. 
Nice chill music in this too. Alright, so we're just looking for the last bits of grayness. Um, so high ground will obviously help here. I don't see any from here. Must be on the other side. Where is the last 1%? Oh! I see a gray bit! Come here, Mr. Gray Bit. I must heal you. I must absolve you of your sins. Blip. Oh, hey! I'm gonna assume that's our 100% completion. What makes you, you? Fireworks! That's what makes me, me. Yep, 100% refunded. Well, I guess that's refunded. That was pretty fun. Oh, I, it's all the buttons. The buttons all fire different colors of things. <laughs> That's neat. Oh, wait, I can manually press the button and then they all go off, I think. Just double check that. Boop. Yep. <laughs> neat. Let's take a look at those credits. Created by Dominique Greasehorfer. Music by Singtu Christofferson Colonnelly. Sounds by Leah Atia. Andrew Kielsing. Additional models by Brent Yangling Liu. And additional texture by Matt Dirks. Alrighty then. Oops. Ah, forgot what buttons jump. I open a menu for one minute and my brain goes dead. Alright, so that is refunded. Looks like there's a new. Just see if there's anything different here in. Excuse me? Okay, there we go. Keys and mouse. Game field view, critical. Yeah, I, I personally think as long as you have, um... I'm just wondering if this is any different. Probably isn't. Nope. Yeah, this is how we started. So yeah. So this was refunct. Um, alright, let me finish my thought. I, I really think, as long as your defaults are really good for your options, um... You know, it doesn't really matter that your options menu is, con is uh, a little complicated. And and you can just do stuff like have an advanced menu. Like, as long as you do- as long as you hide the complexity, I don't really think complexity is a bad thing. Um, you try to present the simplest thing, and you know, you try to give that illusion of simplicity. But, um... I really don't think there's an extremely compelling argument for completely removing the ability to customize stuff. Um, simplicity is sort of like... It's a bit of a false idol in my opinion. Simplicity is great, but um, people go for that ultimate simplicity where you actually remove features and like uh, you can't do stuff like, oh, you know, it, it's too complicated to, you know, be able to co configure your controller, you know, adjust, you know, the field of view. It's like, well, n n no, it's, it's really not. But, uh, whee! Yeah, this was refunct, and that was pretty fun.